One of the main questions that I get is, what have I learned here in Japan? Have I picked up the language yet? Not yet. Something I'm still working on. When you travel to different countries, one thing that you're going to experience is culture shock. Now, it's not all going to be bad. It's not all going to be good. But there are some things that you have to learn to adapt to when you're in a new country. There are 10 things that I have learned and experienced while I'm in Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. This is EKB, EKB TV, and you are watching While I'm in Japan. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you joining the show, taking the time to watch. We're not gonna waste a lot of time. These are just the 10 things that I've learned while I've been in Japan. This is my first year, and I'm going into a new year in Japan, and there's so many more things that I wanna see, especially with things sort of alleviating with COVID-19. I know we're still in the pandemic, and there's still the Delta variant, but things are slowly starting to change, even in the major cities in Tokyo. And some of the cases are starting to finally go down. You may get a chance to explore, travel, and see a little bit more of Japan. I've had the moments of culture shock, and I've had some new experiences, some great, small, some difficult. It's been a mixed bag, but let's get into the details and find out what I learned while I was in Japan. Number one, the first thing, and most difficult thing for me to adjust to was driving in Japan. Now, this may seem sort of simple to some of you. Some of you may see why this can be a difficult thing, but it wasn't physically driving a car, getting behind the wheel. Even with it being on the left side, that is something difficult and something not easy to get used to. But the way the streets are made in Japan is the most stressful and frustrating thing that I've experienced since I've been here. The streets are extremely tiny. They're really small and the cars are designed to kind of fit on those streets. But some are not. If you have the SUV, or if you have a Hummer like my neighbor, it's just, there are no words to how frustrating it is trying to drive on these tiny streets. There's an accident waiting to happen around the corner. And if you're paying attention, you can look at cars to see all the different scrapes, scratches, and scars, and dents, and bumps. One thing that's interesting in Japan is that it's not really difficult to get a new car. And you see the turnover rate for cars happen pretty quickly around here. And it's not all bad driving in Japan. The countryside, the cities, they're beautiful. You just gotta get used to the different roadblocks and the different things that come up while driving. If you're just trying to look at the scenery and look at how beautiful Japan is, you drive slow, you take your time, and there's a lot to soak in. To add to that though, when you're traveling, you have to get used to navigating and being very patient. You're not gonna be able to read the signs, a lot of them are gonna be in Japanese. And even still, you gotta get used to all the traffic signs, traffic lights, and the traffic patterns. And the most stressful thing is, do not miss a turn while you're in Japan. Your 10, 15, 20 minute drive will turn into an hour and it costs you 20 or 30 bucks because if you get to a toll, you're gonna pay. You're gonna pay for your mistakes in Japan, be it just the red tape, paying for the tolls, missing the turn, it can be costly. And just in general, owning a car, having a necessary license and all the different uh, registrations that go along with that, it's a lot of red tape and it's a lot of bureaucracy that comes along with driving and owning a car in Japan. And it can add up pretty quickly, especially those tolls. Number two, to add on to that, you can't forget parking. Parking in Japan is a premium. And that goes for just parking in your own personal driveway to have one or two cars. It's a lot of red tape and it's a lot of details in order to get the authentication and the necessary permits to park your car in your own driveway. Not to mention that if you're going out into the city or if you're traveling out into a place that you're not familiar with, trying to find a parking place is difficult because there are not many options. Even if they do have a parking lot at a McDonald's or a Costco or whatever the place that you're going to, parking is limited in Japan. And it can be difficult to find your place because a lot of it could be filled up or it's just a small parking place. The rest of the locations you're gonna go to are the paid parking. 
And you gotta be really savvy, understanding the cost of yen and knowing your minutes and hours and how much it can add up. There can be 24 hour parking, but depending on where you are, the cost is gonna be different and it can add up really, really, really fast. Number three, something that can actually make this a little bit more convenient and a little bit easier for you, go to the word convenience. With the parking, is transportation. Public transportation in Japan is something to marvel at. The ease of public transit in Japan is a lifesaver. Just being able to walk out of your home, go maybe a few blocks up or just around the corner, and you have a bus station. That bus station can take you directly to the Densha, the train station. The trains really come in handy just to be able to hop on, get your Passmo card, swipe, go, and get to wherever you need to get to in Japan. It really is that simple. Now, of course you have to get used to being able to read the signs, but if you take your time, use your Google app or use your train apps, you can really get to where you need to go. It may take you a little bit of time to be as comfortable with some of the natives here, but just as someone that's just getting into Japan, you can travel and see a lot and do it swiftly just by learning how to use the trains and using those apps. You have a variety of options. You have the Densha, Shinkansen and Shigetetsu. Use the public transit. It is a lifesaver. It saves you time, it saves you money, and it saves you a lot of energy. It really, really is beneficial. So number four, and we mentioned that you have to have the concept of using yen. You wanna get used to having yen in your pocket, the different values of yen, whether it be 100,000 yen, or whether it's 50,000 yen, 10,000 yen, down to your coins. You want to have some concept of counting yen and being able to convert that into USD and vice versa. So that means you also want to have a decent wallet or purse while you're here in Japan. They are completely different than what you're familiar with in the United States. Yes, they're bill folds or yes, they're smaller purses and things like that. But the size of the yen is different. The amount of yen that you will carry at a time is different. And the way the culture treats their wallet is different as well too. Wallets are a very important thing here in Japan. There's even a special holiday when you can go out and buy in a new wallet. It's just kind of a customary thing, which I find really dope. One reason why that's important, especially for men, I'm used to having a very slim, sleek, thin wallet that I can put in my pocket, doesn't get in the way, doesn't really affect me too much. That's not the case with the wallet that I have here in Japan. Bruh. The thing is bulky and it's also like having a suitcase carrying in my pocket at all times. But with the amount of change that is necessary here in Japan, it is a very important thing to have the wallet with the coin purse in there because you're gonna use it. Your change is not just like a quarter or a nickel that you would have in the United States that people often just keep aside and take it to the coin store. That's not working here because the coins that you have add up to your 100 yen is basically the equivalent to a dollar in the United States. Your 500 yen is basically equivalent to $5 and these coins are valuable and necessary and you need them on a daily basis. But there are a lot of smaller denominations that will fill up your pocket really fast too. Just get used to having the change in that purse. It gets frustrating, but it's necessary. Number five, and one of the most important things that'll shock you the moment you touch down in Japan is the convenience and some of the things that are completely different than what you may experience in your home country, that being the United States for me. I mentioned before that the trains are definitely convenient and I love the convenience of the trains because if they're telling you that train is coming in two minutes, that train is gonna be there in two minutes. If it is not, they're letting you and the rest of everyone know that that train is delayed and it's not gonna be a very long delay unless there's an absolute emergency. I absolutely love that. The same goes for the buses and the subways. As we mentioned before, they're punctual, right on time, super efficient. I love that convenience. Also, the convenience. You're gonna see on this show, I'm gonna be talking about the convenience stores quite a bit, just because that is a very important part of Japanese culture and it's a part of just my sustainability for me and my family here in this country. We don't speak the language yet. We're still working to learn the language. Having that convenience where you know 7-Eleven, you know Family Mart, you know Lawson's, and they're right there, just a hop, skip, and away, where you got all the different food choices, places to drink, all the different uh, water options. It's just so much you can do. You can print in the store, send out packages. You can have packages delivered to you to those locations. The convenience stores are just that. 
They're really, really convenient. They really come in handy. They're super duper important. It's a lifesaver. To add to that, you have the vending machines. I'm gonna be talking about that a lot here while I'm in Japan, just because they really come in handy and there's so many different options. They keep my kids satiated, they keep me satiated when I'm just walking, if I'm out for a jog, every corner, every block, in every neighborhood. I live in a smaller town and there's still vending machines everywhere you go. And if you go to the major cities, it's not just something to drink that you can get out of the vending machines. There's hot foods, hot snacks, hot coffee, ramen, whatever you can think of, you can possibly get it out of a vending machine in Japan. That's pretty dope. Last but not least, this is not toilet humor. Toilets are really important here in Japan and the way they treat the toilets, you know, it's just an area of sanctity and peace and just joy when you walk into the bathroom. They literally have toilets that sing and talk to you. That doesn't happen in the United States. And when it does happen, it's pretty creepy. They use it to cover sounds, they use it to cover smells, to help you clean up well. The bathrooms are really clean in your home, outside of your home. Just if you're going into a public restrooms, it's a completely different experience than going to a bus stop in the United States and walking into that bathroom. Oh my God. My kids will love that. But there's two sides to every coin. So number six, when you have convenience, you may also have the lack of convenience. Not everything is just gonna be perfect in Japan. One thing as an American you have to get used to is the lack of drive-throughs. There isn't the same option that you're just driving along and you're gonna stop at a Burger King, a Wendy's, a McDonald's, KFC, all these different places. Are they here in Japan? Yes. But do they all have the access to just take your car and pull up, grab your food and go? It's not happening here, Playboy. That's something you gotta get used to. The drive-through is few and far between. You're usually gonna have to stop at the convenience stores to grab something quick and on the go. Every now and then, you might stop at a spot at McDonald's, but I don't think it's gonna be around every corner like it is in the United States or other countries. Speaking of, fast food. Fast food is here, but the fast food here is not the same as what you would expect back home. You are able to get your burgers and things like that, but your Moss Burger is not the same as your Wendy's Burger that you were expecting. Also, just in general, to be able to just get fast food is not the same. Japanese fast food, there's some really cool locations that we're gonna talk about here on this channel, but they're just not the same as just being able to pull up to the window and grab fast food, and they're not on every corner like you used to. It's a little bit healthier, which options are sometimes better, but just having that you know quick stop, get some fries and stuff in your face, Sorry, it's not as common. 24 hour stores. Now there's some 24 hour stores and locations that you can go into, but it's not nearly as abundant as it is in the United States. Sorry, there's no Waffle House. There's no IHOP and there's a Denny's, but it's not what you expect and it's not gonna be open 24 hours. Get used to kind of being prepared that towards the end of the day, you wanna have yourself prepped so you're just not stuck, starving, or bored in the middle of the night. Also, breakfast in Japan is completely different than what it is in the United States. So if you're expecting to get some bacon, eggs, and pancakes, and get stacks, and all this, like I mentioned with the IHOP, it's not the same. Breakfast here is a little bit different. The portions are a lot smaller, and the food is a lot lighter. Just culturally, Japanese don't want to eat heavy early in the day. They want to feel lighter. And that's something that most of us, especially Westerners in the United States, have to get used to. Sorry, folks. Number seven, something that hit me as soon as I got to Japan, and this is a crash course. You have to understand about trash. Now, you can watch a lot of videos, and they're going to talk about if you're walking on the streets and where you're going, that you won't be able to just drop your trash anywhere. Of course, you don't want to litter, but just having a trash can at every municipal spot or at the corner especially like in New York City or LA, it doesn't exist. It's not the same. You really have to be strategic about that. That's not the only thing. When you move into your home, 
The sorting, recycling of your trash is like having another job and you really have to be on top of it. There's even a book that helps you learn how to sort and trash and know which day things go out. This was my first job here in Japan. This is something that I had to learn. My wife was done with it and it was like, hey, now that you're here, you gotta learn to do this and get it done right. It took some time. My mother-in-law had to show me the ins and outs of sorting the trash. And still to this day, aside from driving, it's the second most frustrating thing that I had to deal with while I'm in Japan. Tip that I would recommend is to carry a bag with you when you're going out. Have something, an over the shoulder bag, and have like a little liner bag in there with you because if you're out with your family, especially with my kids, we're piling up from vending machines and getting little juice bottles and different bags and candy snacks from the convenience stores. You wanna have something that you can store that away so your hands are not filling up and you're not just frustrated just looking around trying to find a trash can. It can take you some times and it can really be mind boggling. Number eight, so we're gonna piggyback off of seven and the importance of having a little bag with you to carry around. If you wanna have a shoulder bag or a carry-all, something like that to have along with you, it really does come in handy. Especially if you're gonna take a bathroom break, there may not be any hand towels to dry your hands. This is something that people won't tell you and you don't see on a lot of videos, that you're just left with wet hands and feeling uncomfortable. One thing that people who have been here for a while will let you know that you might need to have a hand towel with you just to dry your hands, it's surprising it's weird, but it is necessary. Also, the bathrooms are somewhat available to you. And you know, you have options that you can go when you're out on the streets. They are amazingly clean. That is something to really keep in mind. But you do gotta get used to the squat toilets sometimes. They're not as common as they used to be, but they are still around and it can be a shock. Trust me, my daughter had a meltdown when it happened to her. She still hates those things and we've been here for a year. Number nine, one thing, just bathrooms in general in Japan are really awesome and I love the way that the cultures are kind of centered around them. That's something you just kind of got to get used to. Your shower is not going to look like your shower from back home. They're not fixed. They're showers that you can actually take off so you can wash your whole body and hold in hand. And the, basically the bathroom is a room within itself. There's no toilet in your home bathroom. The toilet is off into another location, usually in a much, much smaller room for privacy and detail. That's something that took me a while to get used to, but now that I think about it, I like it a lot more. In Western countries, especially in the United States, you normally only see this in more expensive homes where you have the separation from your shower to your toilet. I mentioned some of the conveniences that come along with the bathroom, like the singing toilets. That's something I really love. But I also love the warming seats and the bidet. I'm telling you, just to be honest with you guys, it's life changing. I don't know how I'm adjust when I go back in the States because I love my bathrooms here in, in Japan. It really does make you feel like a cleaner, better person. No joke, seriously. And number 10, last but not least, the last thing that I wanna mention here is the thrifting and the shopping. This is something that actually comes in handy and you may not be a thrift store shopper or anything like that, but take advantage of it while you're here in Japan. Something that separates it from the United States, a lot of the thrift stores are just tattered and worn things that people wanted to get rid of, but there's so little space here in Japan that people were constantly having turnover and getting rid of things, whether you know, it was new or old, but just culturally in general, things are just much more well taken care of here in Japan. So the things that you can find are absolute treasures. They're neat, they're tidy, they're clean, they're upkempt, and they could be historical or they could be something that's brand spanking new and you can get it for a great price. Also, if you're really savvy, there's a resale value. All the anime, cars, electronics, especially old Nintendo games, Playstations, records, all these kind of things can be in great shape. This can be something that's just good for you to keep for yourself or to resell to Westerners or just your friends. And it's really something that can become great for collectors and traders and sellers. Get used to the Watmans, Book Offs, and all the little mom and pop thrift stores in Japan. They really are something that is a lifesaver and that's convenient. And I learned this as soon as I got here. I hope you guys like the list. Hope this video isn't too long, but it is a year's worth of information that I can kind of compile for you guys. I hope this is entertaining for you. Thank you guys for watching the show. There are more things that I learned while I was here in Japan. I'm going to be adding on to that later. If this is the information that you like, stay tuned. Click that like button so other people get to see the information too. 
and please subscribe to the channel. I got more coming with EKB TV. I'm EKB. Stay tuned, guys. This is While I'm in Japan. Thank you for watching. Hey, be kind to your neighbors all over the world. Peace.